So we live in a moment when two very powerful, risky, speculative technologies are colliding together, or more appropriately, trying to be fused together by very powerful industrial interests. Um, and this paper, Black Box Biotechnology, um, addresses what's coming out of that that fusion, that integration, and, and why it matters for the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is to say for the future of life on Earth. Um, the, on the one hand, uh, the Convention on Biological Diversity and, and many people in civil society have been dealing with biotechnology, genetic engineering for, for, for many decades. Um, and what we've seen is a push by the biotechnology industry to use new speculative kind of more radical techniques that are often grouped under this term synthetic biology. And, um, and this is engineering life as if it were an engineering substrate, which it's not, but attempting to do that. At the same time, in the last two years, we've seen the massive rise of so-called AI, artificial intelligence. Um, and what that is, is computational systems which try to uh, predict uh, what would be a new form of writing or a new form of a picture. Um, and, and probably the best known example that people will know is ChatGPT. Um, where you've got uh, uh, an AI, an artificial intelligence, um, which if you ask it to make a picture or to write a piece of text for you will generate a so-called novel piece of text or a new picture. This is called generative AI. And where these things are all mashing together right now um, is something that's being called by the industry, by big tech companies, generative biology. And the idea behind this is that you can ask a, an AI system, a generative AI system, make me a new strand of DNA or make me a new protein, just as you might have asked, make me a new picture or make me a new text. And that this new strand of DNA or this new protein could have particular properties um, or create a particularly novel new life form. Um, and although that sounds pretty wild and science fiction like, that's what actually billions of dollars are now being trained towards by companies like Microsoft, Google, uh, Meta, Facebook, Salesbook, uh, Salesforce, NVIDIA, the, the largest tech companies in the world. And as you, you have this attempt right now to have bots that don't just make pictures or have text, but actually make life forms or proteins is exactly the moment when the UN Convention on Biological Diversity has to step in and say, wait a minute, there, there are going to be issues here. There's going to be safety issues. There's going to be justice issues. And honestly, there's going to be questions about whether this is even just a whole large ball of hype. So in October 2024, the UN Convention on Biological Diversity, which is the premier space where governments get together to work out how to support life on Earth, is meeting in Cali in Colombia. And one of the topics on the agenda under the item of synthetic biology is how to be properly scanning for new developments uh, that, that could have real impacts and issues. It's, it's about horizon scanning, technology assessment, and monitoring of new developments in synthetic biology. And very specifically, there is language in front of the governments saying that they sh could start a process uh, to look into the integration of artificial intelligence and synthetic biology, this whole area of generative a AI biology. Um, and and this, this is really urgent because many of the things that the Convention on Biological Diversity seeks to do to, to make sure that new genetically engineered organisms and, and, and products are not risky, they're not they're, they're concerned about biosafety, those questions come up even more strongly with so-called generative biology, um, as well as the fact that for this whole enterprise to, to happen, for, for new generative biology tools to generate new proteins and life forms and organisms, it is based upon taking all of the world's digital sequence information, that is to say the digital version of all the DNA, and just stuffing it into a, into a computer program as if it was free for Microsoft or Google to use as they wish. 
And this flies in the face of agreements made at the Convention on Biological Diversity to stop biopiracy to ensure proper justice. So um, many, many, many of those who work around this issue are saying we, we, we need to have a proper process at the Convention on Biological Diversity that will look at whether this new developments in generative biology have implications for biosafety, for biopiracy, uh, and, and whether they're, they're just, uh, whether they're overhyped, they, they probably are very overhyped. This is an attempt by big tech companies to bring in more investment. So we've called this report Black Box Biotechnology. And that refers to the fact that when you use artificial intelligence, you actually create a sort of unknowable black box. Uh, this is this is common in discussions on artificial intelligence, that the technology fundamentally obscures and makes opaque what what is happening behind it. Um, and this has really big issues uh, for for biosafety, for justice, for questions of biopiracy. In effect, what's happening with the the convergence, the integration of synthetic biology and artificial intelligence is you're taking two technologies, both of them so-called cutting edge technologies, but in fact, highly experimental technologies, uh, which, which are uncertain in all kinds of ways, that they produce unpredictable outputs. We've seen this over decades with genetic engineering, that when you engineer life forms at the genetic level, you get secondary effects and unpredictable outcomes because we don't really fully understand the substrate we're working with. At the same time, in the last two years with uh, generative biology, with artificial intelligence, it's become apparent that generative artificial intelligence um, is full of errors, it's, it's full of uh, what are called hallucinations. Um, it, it's, uh, it's not producing truth, it's producing uh, things that kind of look all right, but often are full of mistakes. And that's baked into the technology. Now you take those two speculative, error-ridden technologies and you put them together, and then you put them under the control of the world's largest tech companies, who are the world's largest companies, you've got a recipe for, uh, for real problems down the line. Because in this case, we're not um, producing new forms of text or, or new forms of pictures, uh, you're producing living organisms or proteins that people might put in their body, organisms that might go out into the environment. So it's really urgent that the uh, regulators and, and the governments who, who have responsibility for oversight of life on Earth uh, are able to ask the difficult questions. And this report starts to ask those difficult questions about generative biology.